Uh, and um, it's good to have these kind of relationships so you have an understanding of what the hyperscalers can do. But in many cases, I think that the larger consulting firms have deferred to the hyperscalers uh, for architecture. And the reason why is because there's a you know financial benefit for both organizations. So in many cases, the hyperscalers will go after a client together with the big consulting firms. Uh, and therefore, something happens with the hyperscalers like this week, the big, uh, you know, AWS blew up and, you know, did a lot of damage. Uh, you're normally not going to hear from them uh, because of that relationship, which is a little bothersome to me because, at the end of the day, they're the ones who should be your trusted advisors. They're the ones who really kind of need to lead thought in the space and understand the directions. And uh, they didn't step up and do that, which is hugely disappointing to me, but not unexpected. So what do we learn from this event? Besides, uh, I, was, I was right, Atlanticum was right, and uh, uh, it's very expensive when these outages occur. Well, the first and foremost thing, we need to rethink single cloud dependencies, which we've been preaching on this channel since this channel was around, and certainly I've been preaching for the last 10 years, you know, and talking about cloud computing and the use of cloud computing uh, to the most optimized benefit for your enterprise. So enterprises must reconsider the heavy reliance on single hyperscalers like AWS. The outage, I think, was a wake-up call. And so even the biggest platforms have vulnerabilities. Uh, and you really should put your eggs in many different baskets.